Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now this is the AMD Ryzen 7 8700G. I've been using it almost exclusively for about a week and I'll upload my review soon. In the meantime I wanted to talk about ray tracing performance because although RT is definitely best left turned off, the 780M iGPU does support it. The following gameplay footage isn't going to be pretty, but let's get into it and see what we can expect. I'm using the 8 core 16 thread 8700G at the stock frequency, along with 32GB of dual channel 6400MHz RAM. This is ray tracing without a graphics card. Ok so here we are in Cyberpunk 2077, first of all I want to show you that we can indeed enable ray tracing with integrated 780M graphics, we can turn everything all the way up and we can even enable path tracing which is a terrible idea because it will absolutely decimate performance, not that it's going to be brilliant anyway. I think FSR 2.1 is probably best here, I'm actually going to use the lowest settings aside from ray tracing which I'm going to put on high, I think I'll choose the RT Ultra preset and turn everything else down to its respective lowest just so that we can get the full visual effects of ray tracing itself but this also gives us the best chance of achieving a higher frame rate. I definitely wouldn't recommend playing like this um, because it's a bit pointless, especially with lower end hardware like this. We'll also turn the texture quality down. We'll leave FSR 2.1 at auto for now, but I have a feeling we'll probably have to adjust that as well. So let's load up a save game. Okay, so here we are. As you can see with ray tracing, sorry, FSR 2.1 set to auto, we're not quite hitting 20 FPS, so we're going to jump back into the settings here and choose performance mode. Instead, we'll up the image sharpening as well. Will this make things any better? FSR 2.1 in performance mode? No, we're still not getting 30 FPS. It looks like it's going to have to be ultra performance here. 20 to 25 FPS probably isn't what I'd call playable, but we can still see the visual effect that ray tracing adds. One more time then, let's go and set things to ultra performance, leave the sharpening where it is, and see if we can hit at least 30 FPS. Yes, 31 FPS, look at this. Now, what I will say is that this recording is going to look better than how the game actually does on my 1080p monitor. We're probably upscaling from about 360p, maybe 240p, something like that. As you can see now, we're getting 40 FPS, which is really surprising. The visual effects are still coming through nicely. Look at the fire over here, reflecting off the walls and the puddles on the floor, hitting almost 50 FPS now, ray tracing on an integrated graphics solution. Yeah, let's uh, load up a different part of the game and see how things look. Alright, so here we are in another part of the map. Once again, we're still seeing around 30 to 40 FPS. Um, still wouldn't recommend playing like this unless you just want to play around and experiment with it. Of course, look at the reflection in that puddle. It still looks like ray tracing as you'd expect it on higher end hardware of course, but the overall image is a lot blurrier thanks to the FSR that's been enabled. Let's run around a bit, start making the uh, the APU work a little bit harder. Can we take that car? Nope. Now everyone's driving at me. Whoa, oh, couldn't avoid him. Let's try and take a car. Drive into a more densely populated area. I have turned CPU, uh, sorry, crowd density down as well, so that's certainly helping out here. Of course, the Radeon 780M is the uh, bottleneck, in this case, the limiting factor, if you will, in pairing with the CPU. Of course, the iGPU is the limiting factor here. The 8700G has a lot more to give. Actually, this is, this is looking pretty good. Look at this, the lighting effects are coming through nicely and ray tracing can be utilised on nothing but the iGPU. We'll get rid of the overlay for a second just to take a screenshot, but let's move on. Okay, next up we have Alan Wake 2 and once again we're going to go with FSR 2 and we're going to set everything to the lowest settings. 360p, there we are, so Cyberpunk was running in 360 mode with ultra performance as well. 
Now we could certainly turn some of the ray tracing options down like we could have in Cyberpunk, but to me that defeats the object of this video, which in itself isn't all that serious anyway. I just wanted to see how good the ray tracing uh, effects looked at their maximum when we have to make some serious resolution sacrifices. Okay, so the gameplay for Alan Wake 2, 10, 11 FPS, that area there looked quite good, the lighting and the fog in front of the wall there. It still looks pretty decent, even at upscale 360p, I have to say, but it's certainly not what I would call playable. Now, I haven't run any exact benchmark figures, just like I didn't in Cyberpunk. I didn't really think I needed to. In Cyberpunk, it was 30 to 40 FPS most of the time, and here it's 10 to 15 FPS most of the time. So I think we'll chalk this one up as unplayable, but still, it's surprising considering how demanding Alan Wake 2 is, to be fair. Finally then, we're going to try Fortnite. This also has an RT option, of course. Now for the settings, once again, we're going to go with low. TSR low is enabled with performance mode. So we're going to be upscaling from 50% 3D resolution here. Um, Nanite virtualized geometry is on. Lumen Epic is enabled for both global illumination and reflections. And of course, the hardware RT option is on too. So let's jump into the game and see what sort of performance we can expect from Fortnite with integrated graphics and RT. Well, 60 FPS, there we go. Now, I wouldn't recommend playing like this, to be fair, because we can hit over 100 FPS with the standard low settings in Fortnite, but as I said before, this is hardly a serious video, and I just wanted to see what we could achieve with the integrated 780M graphics solution, and I think this result, just like Cyberpunk, is quite surprising, to be honest. Who is shooting at me? Run away, run away. Let's see if we can wipe him out there. I, I don't know where that missile was going. I haven't used this weapon before, but close. Uh oh, we're just going to have to resort to bashing. Here we go. Right, let's, uh, let's get rid of him. There we are. Job done. Right, let's head over wall to this building now. Um, look at some of those lighting effects at play. Look at that lamp, look at the reflections there, very nice. Nice to see it running with almost 60 FPS a lot of the time, however. And that just about wraps it up. Ray tracing on integrated graphics, definitely possible, and I think it's only going to get better. Cyberpunk was, I think, the most surprising result of the day, even if it did look like a bit of a blurry mess. But let me know your thoughts down below. Are you surprised by what you've seen today? As I said at the start, I'll have my full 8700G gameplay review coming very soon. I had to wait for a motherboard update um, just to resolve a few of the issues that were pointed out in some of the other videos you may have seen. So um, I've done that now and it'll be up very soon. Thank you for watching as always and I'll see you again in the next one.